Dana. Dana. Uh, this is my schedule. Schedule. Uh, this is not mine. It is true. Uh, well, uh, I, I That's from here. Richard. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. From Richard to Rick. <laughs> okay. What time is it? Is it? It's 9.30 on the dot. I wonder where everybody is. I hope we have a little bit more than that. You guys are going to be talking a lot. <laughs> Good. Richard's here. Couldn't find my Bible, but I can borrow it. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. How's everybody's week? Yeah. Come on in. We're waiting for you. No, I'm gonna pray we now. are waiting for you. Yeah, I'm coming back. Better hurry because you're going to miss the good stuff. I know. I'm going to have to pray too. Uh, but go on Friday and listen to you. Yeah. 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 Yeah
on this on this thing. And she wasn't going to do it. Yeah. And then you remember the lions looking at those people and they're all kneeling and praying and stuff like that. Anyway, we got a song we're going to sing here first. That little one I have in front of you there? Let's sing now. <clears throat> Turn off the lights here, <clears throat> and it gets really dark. Okay. <laughs> now look at the neighbor across from you. Okay, look at them. How many eyes turn to this light? <laughs> That's light in the darkness, and especially have, who's ever gone caving or splunking or whatever they call it. <laughs> Yeah, I've done a lot of that, a lot. And you get down there, and you can't see your hand Ooh. in front of your face. Or if you go to the cabins, uh -huh. like Carl's dad or one of those. Mm -hmm. It is pitch black. I mean, you cannot see anything. And then when the flashlight comes on, everybody's eyes yeah. gravitate toward that, that yeah, light. Like um, <laughs> I, come on in. There's some spots all over the place. We will be there. Okay. Um, we just got singing, got done singing, Thy Word is a Lamp unto My Feet. Okay. Because this lesson is all about a lamp or a light. Before we get into stuff, I want to ask you a question. We'll wait for these guys to sit down. What, you know, creation? On the fourth day, God made the sun, moon, and stars. Now, what was the light on the first day? Uh, yeah. uh, nothing that could be burned was created until the third day. And it wasn't until the fourth day that sun, moon, and stars were created. There's nothing except for God's glory that was able to give light. Yeah, that's that's what I. Now, I want to. How can you prove that from the Bible? How can you prove it? Look up Psalms 104:2. Psalms 104:2. Down on my notes here. 104. To cover yourself with light as with a garment and stretch out the heavens like a curtain. So, this is David talking about creation, basically, this chapter. So, it talks about Jesus covering himself with light, right? But let's look up Revelations 21 23. Revelations 21, 23. Who would like to read that one for me? The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the 
glory of God is illuminated, that the Lamb is his life. So, some people don't see it that way. They, they say, you know, God is the light. I can see, you know, that Jesus, God, is the light. And when he came down, he said, let there be light, there was light. There was an argument presented. I was talking to my brother. He says, well, did God create himself? No, that's not right. But some people think that when he said, let there be light, he created himself. Okay. But I don't, I don't really go along with that. I, I mean, I don't, there's no ands, ifs, or buts. I do not go along with that. He created himself. He's been here for eternity, Rick. Um, I have a question. Uh, did when God did God create light on the first day? And if, if He did, or if He, if this is the revealing of His glory, does that mean that it wasn't? It didn't pre-exist that time. Okay, I want to present a different theory. Okay, scientific. Um, you can put that in that envelope, in that thing. Oh. Um, anyway, what I want to say, God created something that everything has to have. Everything from a hard rock to soft ice cream has to have, is made up of light, electromagnetic energy. Now, you can say that, that this is the building blocks or the foundation for the rest of creation. Do you, you see that? What do you guys think of that? Is that feasible? Would you take the science or the or the, the scriptural one? Or both? <laughs> I'm sitting thinking the phrase let there be light, did it really mean let me create light or hey, let me put light into this place? Because everything after that fact is built on that light. Yeah. But it said the spirit of God was hovering over the face of waters, and then God said, let there be light. Uh -huh. And I, I mean, in my mind, what I've always seen is the light just shone. The light already existed. Uh -huh. The glory of God. <laughs> but that he focused it. On this little thing we call Earth. Uh huh. Yeah. As he was created. So, you know, in my mind, it's kind of like a play that starts out and there, there's something going on, but you don't see what's in the corner because the spotlight hasn't hit it. Yet. Yeah. Oh. It's, it's an interesting subject. I was you know. trying to get, get across us that uh, the Father shared his glory, his son, before the foundation of the Earth. And if, if that's glory, when he said, let there be light, then this would be the time that he shared his glory with the sun. Okay. You know, in the Bible, light is a symbol of holiness, goodness, knowledge, wisdom, grace, hope, God's salvation. That is light. So, you know, let's move on. That, that's a subject that we could probably talk about all day long. Let's read the memory verse. You know, this lesson is so good, I think you could read it verbatim. And it's very, very good today. The memory verse says, Then Jesus said to them, A little while longer the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest the darkness overtake you. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. Explain that to me. Can you explain it that? It seems to go beyond the physical <clears throat> in terms of my understanding. Uh -huh. He who, the pastor said, he who um, walks. Uh, 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 Who walks in the if you Jesus? Ever, if you ever walk without a flashlight in a, in a cave, <laughs> it's confusion. Confusion. You'll never find yourself. It's totally confusing. 
So, and, and that's what this verse kind of says when you walk in the darkness, you don't know where you're going. Where, you, where, where are you going? You know something? Talking about flashlights. That just brought something to my mind. When I was in Thunderbird Cat in Arizona, um, the guy's club went backpacking. And I made myself my own backpack and put rope. And I had it all figured out, but I just didn't have enough money to make, have an old, my own backpack. Anyway, uh, we're going to go uh, hiking down into the Grand Canyon to um, have a super, the Indian reservation down there, into the Grand Canyon. And um, the, the sponsors we were with is no, 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 if we're going to start in the morning, you guys just lay down and go to sleep. Well, we played like we went down and slept, and we waited for them to start sleeping. Then we got up and started hiking. So we were hiking at night in this canyon, and it was dark. I bring it back. And nobody, not all of us, had a flashlight. And what happened, you know, I was walking along, and you know, maybe a guy, two or three guys ahead of me had the flashlight, and I stumbled on a rock. I was flat on my face. I didn't even know how that happened. Because I didn't even have time to react and put my hands out or anything. That happened to all of us that night. But we got there and, you know, and then made breakfast before it was daylight. And then kind of slept a little bit and waited for our sponsors to show up. They never told us anything, but <laughs> we didn't get in trouble. <laughs> um, I can read this whole front of this part of this lesson. It's very good. In the Bible's last book, the revelation of the devil is pictured as a dragon and a serpent, Revelation 12, 9. He is the dragon because he desires to destroy God's people, and he is the serpent because he uses all his cunning lines to deceive them. And it goes on and on and on like that, okay? And it, it's um, very good. It, yet, even in the most difficult times, God is continuing with his people. They found Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. So that is very, very interesting. Let's look up Jeremiah 29, 13. You're hiking through the canyon. If you'd been right up there with the guy with the light, you probably would not have been as likely to stumble. Mm -hmm. We were walking... And slap, I was going to my face. Yep, <laughs> yep, he went, you fell, you know, and that's what's kind of, that's a good analogy. I, I took, you took it to another step. Jeremiah 29 13. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all of your heart. That's, um, that's a good text. Come on in, you guys. Um, Luke eleven thirteen. What does it say? They can put those in your Bibles. This is about light today. About what? About light. <laughs> well, that's what I'm preaching on too. <laughs> that's, right, really. that's, that's good. Eleven thirteen says, "If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask for it?" That is part of the light shown on the Bible. So we need to ask, ask to um, have the Holy Spirit so we can have that light and so we can, can walk with that flashlight in our hand, basically. So we won't stumble over rocks and stuff down the trails we like. Uh, I just wanted to bring up what it's like having a, a lighthouse. Ships need to be able to see that in order to be able to travel safely. Uh huh. That's one thing I used to do, like to do, is go down the Oregon coast and go to the lighthouses. And it's very interesting how they used to do. Now they've kind of gone electronic. They don't actually have the gas that they had to go up there and fill every couple of hours. And they have prisms. And some of these things have, man, a thousand prisms in one light. So this light bulb here, if 
the prism up here catches it, it actually diverts it and sends it out this way. And the next one will divert it and send it out that way. And, and, this, and all the way down, it diverts it. It's kind of neat. And they're all individual lenses all the way around. And it's focusing it so that as it turns, there's a sequence that the ships can recognize. Uh -huh. And they know what it is. And they also know that it, it's not moving. Yeah. You're not going to pass and it to one side or the other. You need to just avoid it. <laughs> okay. Right. Something goes on there. How many have gone to an airport and seen that rotating beacon? White, mm -hmm. green, white, green. That tells you that's a civilian airport. Uh, Army or, I mean, or Air Force or, or some kind of forces is red and white. So you look at that and you know, no, you better not land there or you're going to have your plane taken away and you'll have guns at you and everything else. <laughs> Sunday. What is compromise? Mm. Oh. Okay, you can do it this one time, mm -hmm. it'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's compromise. A mixture of truth and error. Okay. Um, Does this have to be? No, no, that's what I was going to get down <laughs> to. Compromise <laughs> between you and me. What's that? Well, we may be having a problem, and the best way we can solve the problem is to each of us look at, from, look at it from one side, and we realize that this one I could, be, you know, I could, I could ease up here, and the other person could ease up in another area. Or if you and I have a fence between our property, and you've taken, or I've taken your part of the property because it's been grandfathered in or something like this, but it's actually your land. You know, what would we do? We'd talk back and forth and talking back and forth. And pretty soon a compromise means that maybe I bring my the fence back halfway. Right? That's compromise between two people. Or compromise any kind could of, also be considered a, a form of sacrifice too. Compromise? Yeah. You have to Yeah, well yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh -huh. Sometimes you have to give up something you really don't want to to you know, you take uh, Gaza and Israel. <laughs> well somebody Somebody drives his vehicle and crash into yours, and he's not even a licensed person. And instead of his car getting the police and, and lock him up, <laughs> you give him a chance, compromise to not let him go. Well, he's going to pay, gonna pay, gonna pay your for your arm. Yeah, yeah. pay for everything that happened in my car, and then I'll let you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What about compromise between God and Satan? No. God didn't. No. Both of them are not going to compromise an iota. No. You know? What about God and man? Is there any compromise? Okay. Grace is, is not necessary. The What's your definition of compromise? That's, that, right. that's what I was trying to figure out if you're on the top part. What All is right. compromise? But if God says... <laughs> Thou shalt not. Mm -hmm. Don't eat of the tree. And he did. God had a second plan. I wouldn't call it a compromise, but he did have a second plan of a way for him to pay the price that Eve was offering. Yeah. Still, with that that second plan, there was no compromise. It wasn't a compromise, but it wasn't exactly the the what somebody might have said the original contract. Yeah. What about um, how can people compromise the truth? Give me an example. Well, you can compromise the truth. You know, we have in the story the sun god, sun worship, and you have Christianity, which is Sabbath worship, and you have someone that converts from paganism to Christianity. And thinks it through and compromises. Well, let's make Sunday a day this is the amplified Jesus rising from the dead. And let's make Sunday the day of the Lord's Day. Okay. So we try to compromise paganism with Christianity. And it didn't happen all at once. It wasn't, it wasn't like, okay, let's just do this. 
but start by, well, you know, seriously, I mean, let's face it, you know, it's a whole lot easier for some people to become an Adventist if they make the changes a few times. You know, from, from the old life, what they were eating, what they were smoking, what they were drinking, it's hard to change everything at once. So is, yeah, I'm not saying it's compromised, but is it? We still want them to fellowship with us. And they, they made the Sabbath look like a dreary, dragged down day. The and they made Sunday look like a day of recreation. And so when did they start doing that? Not... When did they start making the Sabbath look Sabbath? You the Jews started it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the Pharisees oh, yeah. started That's that. Right. You can't do this. You can't it, do was, this. It, was a, it was a drudgery. It was hard, hard work. Right. Instead of loving God and loving Sabbath yeah. and stuff like that. And so, well, that also for the rest of the commandments as well. They put a heavy burden on the rest of the commandments. I think on the fourth commandment, they put a lot of heavy, heavy, heavy. You couldn't do this. You couldn't do, you know, if you want to come to church <laughs> from where we live today, you have, Sabbath, Sabbath you have to take your coat off and lay it down and go a little bit farther and take another shirt off or take something of yours so you could say you could get to church. That was called a Sabbath day. Yeah. yeah, there was there was six hundred six hundred and thirteen laws about the Sabbath. So, so that's crazy. Let's, let's move on. Oh. 613 laws of Moses. No, yes. no. Yes. Not, not Moses. I got a copy of it all. The, 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 it was interpreted and interpreted. They were and not and, and that, that's what built on the first, I mean, not the first, the rabbis interpreted and added laws by the time Jesus was here on earth. The 613 was laws of Moses, period. I'll have to look at that. From my reading and, and research, it's, it's by that time, the people. Okay, let's move on. Um, it says, Satan determines confidence, uh, undermines confidence in God's word, contradicts God's uh, revealed will, distorts scripture, and at times misquotes the Bible to his advantage. It's like the temptation, right? He used the Bible, but there was a different meaning he was putting on it. Um, let's uh, go down here and it says, in order that for Satan to maintain his sway over men and establish the authority of the people, usurper, usurper he must keep them in ignorance of the scriptures. How did he do that? By chaining the Bible only in the, in the churches and not letting the Ordinary people. Ordinary people read it. They kept it in a language, a language that nobody can understand. They mm. fought tooth and nail to keep it from being translated and published. Mm -hmm. And I mean, at one point in time in France, mm. printing was outlawed. Yeah. Wow. In order to go after the Bible, but they just made printing outlawed. For them. Yeah. You know, uh, talking back a little bit, um, in Florence, Italy, there's um, the Baptist, baptistry of St. John. I've been there. I went in there and looked at the church. It cost too much money for me to actually look in the baptistry. So when anybody walked in, I, I did this quite a bit. You know, I looked in there and there's a lot of gold and everything. And a lot of people uh, have kids, babies, have been baptized in there forever. But did you know that was a pagan place that pagan things were done? before it became a baptistry. Mm -hmm. So they actually slowly flipped it in. So that's compromise. And the deities and all the worship people, of idols. Huh? The worship of idols. Uh -huh. Everything was brought so in and made them... They said the idol is not God, but it represents God. But that's the exactly. apostles or Mary or anybody else like that. We, we went to a uh, dentist office where my daughter works in the hospital. And in the lobby, there was a, a book from the, what do you call it? Vatican City. Vatican City, that's what was the name of it. And so, of course, it has pictures, amazing pictures. Mm -hmm. And we looked at because I've never been to Rome, but the gold and altars and all that stuff. And, you know, the lesson kind of pointed out how you paid for your sins to be forgiven, you paid penance or whatever the word was. And penance. Whatever. And, but the money that must have flowed in 
you know, to that place to be able to build such amazing structure. I mean, because it is truly impressive. I don't know how many have ever been here. It's the most impressive buildings that you know, you've ever looked at. Very impressive. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, in fact, the whole idea of the Vatican City was, um, when we did Fine Arts in School, they said the whole idea was to overwhelm yeah. people when they go to the city and they see all these magnificent yeah. um, structures and sculptures and all of that. People are just overwhelmed and they get the idea in the back of the head, this is really God's. It is. And what a contrast between to that Jesus. and the trough where Jesus lived. Mm -hmm. Okay. Moving on, discuss the way Satan attempts to distort or misinterpret God's word today. And can this happen in our church? Yes, it's yeah. Um, I'm trying to move right on down the road. I had a pastor in Los Angeles that he was a he was a Pentecostal pastor and he was baptized in some heavens. And basically, the church didn't know how to keep, you know, his money coming. So they, they installed him as a pastor. And it was it was a different kind of a story. I mean, it was different. He probably up to make up to half of the verses he quoted were wrong, misquoted, or or he would say something, and that's found in James uh, three five. And it wasn't there. And people and people that didn't study or look up text, Say amen. they were taken right along with them. Sure. You know, so that's kind of in interesting. Um, let's go to uh, Monday. Savage wolves. Why the wording savage? That's not that pleasant word. That's huh? That's not a pleasant word. It's not a pleasant word. No. There's no blood and guts all over the floor. But there is. I mean, thousands and thousands were put on fire, thousands. Right? I mean, history shows those, the, the book of whatever, the martyrs or uh -huh. whatever it's called, but how many people were. When you get away from the light of the Bible, darkness, and but, savage. So, so, place. I have uh, a little bit more explanation from you, Richard. Uh, how does that translate into date, Savage Wolves? Well, I think the concept, remember, at first, the devil used the principle of uh, persecution. Uh, persecution. Mm -hmm. But secondly, it is the compromise. And I think that compromise will be in place until Christ comes. You know, even in our church, you know, there's, there, there can be a tendency of compromise. I mean, we see it, all, you know, in the way people dress, the way people, you know. So I'd at, say, you know, if, if you look at the divisions in society, and it's most obvious when you watch the news, anything political, but I think it translates into life. If you see it one way, and I see it the other, then whatever you say is wrong. You know, in many cases, we're losing compromise, and it's becoming more and more. But when it gets that far apart, it becomes real easy for somebody to say, no, we should just kill them. I mean, I've heard people on the news mm -hmm. reported that are saying, you know, we should kill anybody that's not a Christian. Yeah. You know, when we get back in, or when we should do this, I'm like, you know. It kind of shakes you a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. Well, and, and you, but if you think about it, okay, that, that's the fringe elements. That's not everybody. But at what point do does the tide, does the wave overwhelm everything else? And you just go, and I mean, it, it, it's always been hard for me to, you know, growing up, knowing, you know, the liberties would be done, Sabbath law, Sunday law, death decree. It's always been hard to see, but as I sit here and look at, you know, how divisive things have gotten, maybe it's not that big of a stretch. It's not big. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's another way you can look at this, too. Anybody that comes in and teaches the wrong thing, I can see that there's blood on the floor because those people that believe will not make it. So that's decimation of a flock. 
How many have ever watched a video of a wolf, wolves, killing? It's, it's kind of bloody. It's bloody. They get in there and they can go, go crazy. I, I watched our daughter's dog go after the rabbits and the same thing. I mean, you know, but, you know, you take, uh, you know, cows or anything, they won't just kill one. The, the thing is, have you ever, another thing, have you ever seen, have, who's lived on a farm? Okay. You know, have you ever had chickens? You get some certain type of dogs. I mean, not certain type. They could be, you can have two German shepherds. One, it'll be the nicest kind of animal. The other one will go in there and kill every chicken there is just to kill. And that goes with any kind of dog. They'll go in there and one will be nice. The next one or whatever, how many will go in there and just totally eliminate all the chickens. Not because he's hungry, because he's a chore. Yes, Major. Um, let's read Acts twenty twenty nine. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Not sparing the flock. In other words, the believers would face fierce persecution from within the church. And that from within yeah. is the scary part. Well, and then the next verse says, and from among, you, you, from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking the first thing to call away the disciples after themselves. So you're dealing with, you know, if you think about the Dark Ages, where the reformers were trying to get things fixed, so they were being attacked, you know, from without. But then from within, sometimes there would arise and would prompt people away to do other things. Yeah. And those were okay for the powers that be because they were thinning the ranks. Yeah. But you know, Satan will stuff. use anything in his arsenal to get you. Mm -hmm. Anything. We have to be very, very careful. You know, Second Thessalonians 2, 7 through 12, it says, Things done according to Satan, lying wonders, sinful deceptions to people that did not love the truth. And the truth, you know, is what set us free from all that stuff. Um, it talks about, um, you see, I'm on Monday, right? Yeah, Monday. Um, to make Christianity more acceptable to heathens coming into Christian church, pagan deities were renamed as so-called saints. Sunday and the day of worship and the sun god was gradually adopted as a day of Christ or Christian worship in honor of the resurrection. This false day, not sanctioned in the scripture, prevails today. It comes kind of close to home to me, you know. Um, so, anyway, Satan has those um, things that he will do anything and everything. Um, so we, you, you'll, you'll encounter, you're going on a pilgrimage, you know, you're uh -huh. mentioned and practicing for it, but as the lesson pointed out, so many people go on these pilgrimages to help pay their way to get to heaven. You know, you probably uh -huh. encounter some of those type of people as you go on this uh -huh. pilgrimage because the, the lesson pointed out how people pay indulgence and one of them was pilgrimages that they uh -huh. Yeah. You know, they, they, still they, today, even today, they're still, they're still pilgrimages. Yes, yes. People go to the shrine, yeah. or they go to a special um, church, yeah. and they and kneel on the steps, steps and say so many yes. prayers. So the, the concept of savage wolves, it's, to me, the interpretation is that they don't come out roaring at you. <laughs> They will. You kind you kind of remind me of the, of the little nursery rhyme, the little Red Riding Hood. Mm -hmm. You take that little crawl, crawl itself and come on and walk to capture you. Uh -huh. And so um, you might see somebody says they are doing at worshiping at this church and that that that, but they're not necessarily really Christians <laughs> in terms of true Christianity. And if you follow them, you get caught in the net. Even the ravenous wolves are not always active like ravenous 
That's right. The rest they keep to, slowly. They have to sneak up on the Yeah, that's right. And what <laughs> appear to be harmless yes. in order to draw people close enough mm -hmm. before they see the air. Because if they were always going around eating everything in their way, eventually <laughs> a big path would be cleared and everybody would stay away from the wall. Yeah. And, or some, yeah, they come in in sheep clothing or somebody that we all look up to. Yeah. And this guy has a little ding. Yeah. And uh, there is, that's reasonable. Now we'll be talking about that in a second. <laughs> Human reasoning. Okay, let's, uh, in Matthew um, 7, 16 through 20, it talks about for their fruits, you shall know them. By, by their fruits, you shall know them. And so what, how can we know that there's a ravenous wolf in sheep's clothing? Well, you have to, if you're going to be in the forest, you need to know what creature or what kind of environment it is. If you're in the wolf, if you're in the forest, you will not see a wolf, but he's watching you. Mm -hmm. But you know you're in a, in a certain category, a certain place uh -huh. where you're subject to be, to be destructive. But as we're said, though, this can happen in our church. I said, the Bible says it will come from within. I think you have to stay focused on truth. I mean, they talk about when the Secret Service is training their agents to recognize counterfeit money. Uh -huh. And that is the Secret Service's primary mission when they're forming. They never show them counterfeit bills. They spend all of their time studying real money. Uh -huh. And after you get so good at seeing what the real money is, the fake stuff becomes more obvious. Whereas I might not be able to tell the difference by looking. Somebody that's been through all the training that has seen thousands and thousands of real $20 bills from various ages, various printing presses and stuff like that, fake becomes more obvious. If we don't spend our time here recognizing the truth, the picture. look at the picture again. Get it off. I wasn't here when you looked at the picture, but, but yeah, you did. You have to, but, and again, you have to do it in the right frame of mind because you can read this book and come up with a different interpretation. You have to pray, submit to God, listen to Him, and read it again. Right, right. Not a prayer, sir. And the thing is, we can read yeah. something and read a verse and say, yep, that means Sunday. But if you take text after text after text and look down that line, yeah. you only see one verse that says Saturday. Yeah. If you see what I'm saying, yeah. everybody, you can all look at this pen and on the other side, each one of you mm -hmm. see something different. Yeah. But if you have this lined up and this lined up and this lined up, everybody looks down it and they can see what they're studying, what is really true. Everybody, hold your Bibles up, put them on your laps. Okay, you got to put that. <laughs> if you have a phone, put it on your lap. Okay. What are we gonna do? No Bibles. Why are we here? Hey, you don't have your Bible on your lap. Get it on your lap, man. I word up my head in my heart. <laughs> okay, that's a good answer. It says, you know, uh, safeguarded by the word. Um, what would we do without Bibles? We would use our own reason. We would think, oh, this is right, this is wrong, which is kind of the concept of the world today. But it doesn't really bother somebody else. I'll do my own thing. Uh -huh. In John 17, 15 and so up, up, up. I'll read this one. <laughs> well, I don't know that we trust you right now. <laughs> Sanctify them by your truth. Your I word is truth. Is. So that's what it's all about. Some people say it's a crutch. People that yeah, don't want to believe it say, yeah, you're just weak. Isn't it you're you're simple minded, so you need it's a crutch. Something you just said, the way you said it is important. Mm. People who don't want to. Right. You know, when you, when you talk about when we were back on the other verses here with the uh, Thessalonians and send the deception, there were two types of people that were being deceived those who did not receive the truth and those who refused to believe it. Right. 
you're reading the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all going back. Okay, bring the Bibles up. Okay, how would we know right from wrong without His Word? You know, you know, you plan a salvation. What Jesus did for you and I. Why we need the love of Him to keep uh, and to keep His commandments. <laughs> what is coming in the future? Oh, and no. Jesus coming. I also you. read that you know that God's Spirit comes and you you go out into the a mission field into the jungle, of the Amazon or whatever, and there's somebody who believes they just don't know it. There's nobody's ever put it in the word from God. So God's Spirit can come in. I'm going to say another God. thing too. Nature. Yeah. Is the second book of God, and nature can teach you all this stuff. Okay, now let's go to Wednesday reasoning. What is human reasoning, Richard? <laughs> he was just reasoning. Yeah. What? <laughs> what? It was just reasoning. Well, I, I, I hear that they are in the process of writing a you know update Bible. They do it every year. You know, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And they, in, in all actuality, a new Bible can't, it's plagiarism if you use the old Bible. <laughs> so they have to put it in their own words and they change stuff a little bit and more. And this happens more and more all the time. Not necessarily because, I mean, they, when they find new manuscripts and they, they look carefully at some of the interpretations they've made before, we realize that they've made wrong, um, a wrong interpretation. So we have to be careful in not saying that. When when have they found new manuscripts? They, they, they find new manuscripts. I mean, like for instance, the Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay, that they was yeah. And then they, the the other thing they they found, and and when some of the some of the scholars who interpreted the, the scripture at one point in time did not have all the information and they interpreted some of the, the passages wrong. And so when you look at the original languages, that's what it tells us at school. You have to you look at the original languages and make sure what they get from the what you get from the the um, those manuscripts and what you have a scripture today is, is correct. I saw this one and I heard and I saw this guy in St. Evans. He's kind of on the outside of Adventism because the church doesn't really. Anyway, he's rewritten the New Testament. And... I'm not talking about I, that. No, let, let's, let me finish. <laughs> the, um, the, what happened is that um, he, or somebody was in his place teaching Sabbath school. And they were reading it. Oh, let's, let's go to the other one because his is better. And I go, man, why are they doing that? Because the other one is better than this one. And that kind of blew me out of the water. So, human reasoning. Explain, what, what, what does it actually do? Well, I, I have happened to have a brother that believes in that, that you know, human reasoning, you know, you look at science, and what they've come up with, and you, you use their science, and it's human reasoning, and it makes sense. You know, when somebody is sick, you just cut them and drain the blood out. You know, and <laughs> get rid of the bad stuff, yeah. Yeah, get rid of the bad stuff. They've that for <laughs> Human reasoning is using your brain to make reasonable decisions. Okay. Okay. If, and it also, we can, you can explain stuff away. And you can say, you know, or making excuses is human reasoning. Or let's do it this way. Uh, how do we, like we've basically talked about using it in our daily lives. What about you're late to work? The fast way to get to work is dangerous. It's on the freeway. There's always somebody, uh, somebody dies on that freeway every day. There's another way that's a little bit more scenic. It has, you go through farm pastures and all this stuff, but it takes 20 minutes longer. Hmm. Human reasoning. Which way should I go? That's human reasoning, isn't it? How many have ever been lost? The, the oh, Sabbath yeah. school lesson brought somebody getting lost in there. How many have truly been lost? You mean lost or just 
Who really should have asked for direction? <laughs> <laughs> I always knew what state I was in. <laughs> and, and nowadays it's so good because you can get out your phone and look at the GPS and see who's a boy. No signal. No signal. No signal. <laughs> <laughs> you can be lost because somebody gives you the wrong direction. Yeah. Well, well, that's not was. really lost. There's people that yeah, go. Lost, yes. Huh? To get the wrong direction, you're lost. Yeah. Okay, you're lost. You but you know right. where you're at. You may not know where you are. No. You're in the, okay, no. let's say you're in the mountains hiking, and you're up there, mountains, trees, you can't see any landmarks. You walk for three or four hours. Hmm. You've done this back and forth, and um, where's the truck? And you're out there wandering. How do you find your way? Right. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I, there was these guys in Idaho one time. This is kind of off the subject, but um, they were lost. It was snowing like crazy. They were on horseback hunting. It was snowing deep, deep, you know, it was getting deeper all the time. Pretty soon they were freezing cold. They, they didn't know where they were. They shot their horses, cut them open, and got inside. Yeah. Oh, come on. Stop. To stay warm. That did? They stayed warm. They stayed warm for a while. You know, in the morning they woke up, and there was their truck. <laughs> they were lost. They didn't know where they were. You know, they had the general idea, but it was snowing so hard, it's white out. How many have been in a white out where you can't see anywhere? That's and right. you're wandering. And in the in the in the back east, well, I'm saying back east. I think I'm in Idaho. <laughs> back west a little bit. They used to have between the barn and the house a rope stretched, mm -hmm. and you would follow the rope to the barn to milk the cows, and then you'd follow the rope back to the house. Otherwise, you're out there on the prairie, even, gone. Even here in Florida, how many have been driving, and you're so glad there's a semi in front of you so that you can see something in front of you in the rain. Yes. You know, I, I've had that had to walk in the quiet out where the mm -hmm. storm is so bad. It's like, okay, as soon as I get to a place, mm -hmm. I'm pulling over. Mm -hmm. But I also have to remember there's a car behind me that's following my mm -hmm. lights, a car behind him following mm -hmm. his lights. I got to make sure I do this slowly so I don't call oh, yeah. the master pilot by just pulling mm -hmm. off the road. Okay, we talked about reason and how bad it is and all this kind of stuff. We read, we read the Word of God. Do we have to use human reasoning on that? What do you mean? It's black and white. It's black and white? What is reasoning? But you have to have a mind to be able to decipher what's being said, right? Yeah. yeah, and you don't, we don't check our minds at the door when we walk in church. We have to have human reasoning because God gave us what? He gave us a reasoning. brain, but I think he, we gave also, a, he gave us choice, right? Yeah. I think we also have to make the choice to train our reasoning. Uh -huh. So you, as an aircraft mechanic, would look at a problem differently than a nurse would. We may be looking at the same problem, but we come at it from two different angles. But if we're not trained, we haven't trained our minds to look at it. You really don't want me near the engine on the airplane. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Just don't. You want me sitting back with my hands behind my head saying, oh, that's waiting crazy. for the oxygen mask to come down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think, you know, when you, when you talk about compromise, you're talking about when you read the word of God and there's a command that is given and you're convicted that you should do it, but then I, I say, well, but other people aren't doing that. They're not following that and they're Christians and they're really nice people and they're wonderful people. Uh, I don't feel that I really need to do that. I, 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 they can't be all wrong. Um, so I'm compromising, but I'm, I'm still reasoning. I'm mm -hmm. looking at so compromise. I'm looking at other Christians, right? So compromise um, and reasoning. You can look at hand. You can look at the day of worship, you know. You could say, "Well, I just don't feel it. I have to. I have to keep that. I, I don't. I, 
And I really, I don't really feel that I really, see, I don't feel, I don't feel this, uh, that I have to go to church, period. Uh, you know, I'm a spiritual person, but I worship God in private. You know, I don't, I don't believe in organized religion. See, you know, that's where a lot of reasoning comes uh-huh. in today. I mean, I'm talking about something that's very current. And um, they are straying from the Word of God, right? I mean, under conviction, this is the Word of God, but I'm compromising because... I feel, you know, I've gone to Bible studies where and okay. people would say, well, you know, uh, Pastor, I prayed about it last night, and, uh, you know, I had to, you know, the Lord spoke to me and said, really, it's not important. <laughs> it was good enough for Grandma and Grandpa. Give me that old time. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, that no so, I mean, yeah, so, this, so there's, a, there's a combination of rationalization, and you're using your reason. But it's human reasoning, right? Yeah. It's not just say a oh, line, right? That's what we have to go by. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, oh, man. That is too quick. Let's see here. What's the difference between human reasoning and divine uh, revelation? There's a lot of difference in there. But the Bible says, right, there's a way that seemeth right into the moon. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's in Proverbs sixteen twenty five. Yeah, yeah. So, and that way leads to what? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Um, let's go. Yeah, in Corinthians, Second uh, Corinthians four three through four says, "The way that seems right to man leads to death. If our gospel be hid." It is hid from that that, that are lost. I, I wanted to talk about that, but anyway, let's go on. Battle for the mind. What happens with that? What do you mean, battle for the mind? Very logical. Satan wants you. Jesus. Because you know Jesus, and he, you know what he says. Come unto me, and I'll leave that. Satan forces. Yes. Jesus doesn't. You know, right. You're talking about how to get the, what's in the lesson is starting in the middle of the uh, paragraph here. The battle between Christ and Satan is the battle for the minds of men. Mm-hmm. Satan's principal work is to blind or darken men's minds. He does this by keeping them from the study of God's word, yeah. by deranging the powers of the mind through the excess of body and soul. By wholly occupying the mind from the things of this life and by feeling the pride and self exaltation. The lack of knowledge on the part of the lost is not because they could not know, it's because they would not know. Would not. Right there. I had a friend in Los Angeles that went to this church that I went to. We were sitting around with some guys talking Bible. And pretty soon he goes like this. I said, What are you doing? He says, I don't want to hear this. I don't want to be held accountable. It just blew me out of the water. He did not want to hear this truth. And it's not because, you know, it's what we could have known. And we should know everything we can know about the Bible and the light that he sheds on it. And it kind of it kind of blew me out of the water. In early writings, page um, 561, it talks about Jesus and a group of people. And these people, some of them prayed and had their eyes on Jesus. The other ones had their heads down. And when Jesus stood up and went into the most holy place, the people that had their eyes on him followed him in. The rest of them, their heads down, Satan moved in. And they looked up and saw Satan. And they asked him for guidance and help. Mm. And Satan would do stuff. So we have to be, our eyes need to be on Jesus, totally on Jesus. So that, that was kind of interesting to me about that. Um, it's just about the end of the lesson. I was going to ask you guys more questions here. Um, I want to ask a quick one. What old, um, uh, let's see here, what, what was that question? It says, um, what reformers inspired you as someone who? Uh, what reformers inspires you as someone who called people back to the Bible and away from false doctrines that uh, had kept people in the darkness? 
Anybody? How many, how many have watched that old movie and it made an impression on me like crazy? 1953, Martin Luther. Yeah. It's an old movie, black and white. And he stood up there and says, here I, uh, what I uh, said, uh, let's see, uh, here I stand, I can do no other. Yeah. That was pretty cool. What I wanted to end with on this lesson is on Friday. It says, what I say unto you, I say unto you all. Watch. Mark 13, 37. So he tells everyone. He told them, and he says, I'll tell it to everybody. Watch. One of the things I did this morning was follow that what it says at the bottom of the Sabbath. It's, it's the Great Controversy yeah. Chapter 3. Yeah. If you haven't read that, I highly, highly recommend you read that. And as you look at this whole quarter, if you follow that instruction at the bottom of the Sabbath portion, you'll go through the entire Great Controversy. Yeah. So what an opportunity it is for us all, even though maybe we've done it before, but yeah. very if you don't have a copy, there's a map. Yes, and you can listen to it. If you don't want to read it, you can listen to it in audio as well. So, cool. Let's have a word of prayer. Mm -hmm. right, Father, thank you for another Sabbath. And thank you for the Holy Spirit being in this place to guide us in what you want us to do. Help us to keep our eyes on you so we don't lose focus. And when you move, we need to move with you, God, and to understand what you need to tell us. Dear Jesus, we love you so much. And please come to our hearts. Amen. 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 Amen.